Hello, welcome to TechWeb Dots. Today we will discuss how can we track changes in Entity Framework Core. Okay, so let's start without wasting time. So all the green bullets we have already covered in our previous sessions, and today focus is on Entity State and its change tracking. And this tutorial is especially for beginners. Okay, and I strongly suggest you. to check the playlist if you are interested in any of the video so let's start without wasting time so in entity framework the db change tracker it is a masterpiece the db change tracker automatically tracks the state of any object loaded into a data set within a db context i believe you are aware a little bit about how asp.net core application works if you don't know i strongly suggest you to watch the previous videos okay so any changes to the data will be tracked and saved when save changes is called on the entity class you usually don't need to worry about the state of your object however in case of deleting an object you can set the state of an object to entity state dot deleted and save a round trip to the database so you you must be wondering about what are the entity states so here is a list you can see there are multiple values of entity states that can be detached unchanged added deleted and modified and you can take a pause and just uh, uh, get the meaning in real life what actually these are and here is a piece of information you can see there is a for each loop and in that we are using entity entry and using the change tracker so we will get the object in change tracker dot only when there is a change in db set or you can say when there is a change in entity okay and from that entity you can get the information like its name its state and its fully qualified name okay and another simplest way is you can use entity state and equal to you can use context dot entry dot entity round basis dot state this is also this will also return the state of your entity okay so let's switch to visual studio without wasting time this is the same solution on which uh, i was working on in the last session so i strongly recommend you to watch the previous sessions as well but i will also try to make this session independent so if you don't have time so this independent session will also work for you as well okay so you can see this uh, this uh, piece of actions all are working okay even i will also show you when we apply the changes of tracking okay so uh, let's close this session first and let me go through you the code so the most important method i will demonstrate in this uh, in this piece of code i have already written for you so we can save some time okay so as you can see there is a update book method okay which is receiving book entity and in that first we are checking either book entity is null or not okay in that case i applied a method before and after the change of entity state okay here you can see i am calling a method show entity state that i have written in the same uh, class okay and i am passing the my db context okay and after that i am making changes in the state of entity and making it to modified and then again i am checking what is the state of my entity okay so let me put the put the breakpoint here and let me show you if i run this that will work because uh, that will only hit uh, when we update okay let's click the fifth record and just give it a number 5 to 51 and save it okay now here we go now we are in the update book method and we are going to check the entity state as of now if i press f11 these three piece of code i have written over here so here what we are checking we are using entity entry okay and from where it is coming it is coming from this using a statement change tracking okay so this is very important okay you must include it and in that we are also calling the context dot change tracker dot entries and it will contain only when there is a change in entity there is no change so it came out from this okay now 
we have received the update book so we are making this entity to modify it okay now again we are going to change uh, and check either there is a change yes there is a change now we are inside and here we are using the underscore which is a discard string or you can say the local variable which you can assign but cannot read from or you can say these are write only local variables and we are not using it anywhere so just to show you we will get the name from this property we will get the state which is modified we will get the entity it is a fully qualified name okay so this information we are capturing here so in this way at any point of time we can check either our entity is modified or not okay let's press f5 here so now we can see my entity is updated if i click again and just uh, give the normal number uh, remove the breakpoint continue now changes are updated successfully okay so let me close this browser okay so i hope the uh, concept is very simple how we can be check the entity state in entity framework core okay so i hope you like this video if you have any question any suggestion any comment just uh, write into the comment box and don't worry about the piece of code code link is given in the description of this video and in the next session i will show you in a very simple way so that you can understand at least i would like to add something in your bucket and we will discuss what is conflict handling in entity framework core so don't forget to give your feedback that's the only inspiration for me to create such videos hit the thumbs up bell icon thanks for watching bye bye